the one thing about the death penalty that makes it so wrong is the fact that when a society will stoop to lawlessness to, I guess, eradicate lawlessness, basically what you're saying is you're going to become killers to kill killers. And when to do that, you throw all the rules out the window. And so innocent people, retarded people, mentally impaired people, all of them gonna get caught up in that web because lawlessness doesn't care. I mean, it, it's all about exacting revenge. This is the story of Texas death row prisoner 999068. This is Dominique's story. Growing up the way I did, being in a cycle of violence, it kind of prepared me for a situation like this, even though it wasn't supposed to happen like this. So I can adjust to this and not let this place wear on me or get the best of me because I've been mentally prepared for it a long time ago, though I didn't know it. You know, it's, it's funny how everything works, works itself out, but that's what happens. In reality, if you send us to die, and I mean, it just puts so much of your life in perspective. It makes you look at things in a whole other way. So if you take the cost that they're they're paying to kill me and invest it in my life, they could, I could have had a beautiful future. But instead, they don't invest in our lives. They they invest in destroying. Houston, Texas, big city, big money, big opportunity. For some, at least. For the Greens, this was home in 1970s Houston, Naughty Oak Trail. Emmett and Stephanie planned to raise a family in this working class neighborhood of mostly African Americans and Hispanics. They celebrated their firstborn, a boy, on May 13, 1974. His name, Dominique Jerome Green. <laughs> I remember this little guy about nine months old, tottering across the floor on his feet. He's nine months old and he's walking, okay? Um, I remember this little guy used to have a beautiful smile. He was smart as a whip. He could do anything he wanted. He set his mind to, he'd do it. And so he was like the, he was always the leader and stuff. Leading especially his baby brother, Marlon, who was born a year and a half later. The two boys became inseparable. There was a, a bayou a couple blocks over. And we always used to go and run up and down the bayou. The bayou is just like a, a big drainage ditch that they use in the, the flooding states like Texas. Because once it starts raining, it just floods everywhere. So we used to run up and down the bayou. And one day we were running towards the bayou, and I tripped, and I started rolling down the bayou towards the water, and I fell in. At that point, I couldn't swim. And I was only like eight, eight or nine, and I was scared of the water. Dominic stood at the edge of the water, and he didn't come in to get me. He just talked me out of the water. <laughs> He's like, if you start moving your arms and kicking, you'll be able to swim. He's like, if you don't want to drown, you'll start swimming. And so. I just did what he told me, and I swam out. And then he jumped in and started swimming, just to show me that he could swim, but that he wasn't coming to get me. He's going to make me get my way out of there on my own. 